Hey everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby Supply again. Um, I'm making this video today and I don't know how extensive it will be, but um, I would first of all like to apologize to everybody because I am going to the dark side. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to take all of my plastic wheels off and replace them with metal wheels. And I'll get into the reasoning and how I'm doing it and all that in this in this video. So stand by and take a look. Okay, guys. Um, I say I went to the dark side because for years I, I belonged to many many uh, model railroad forums out there. I don't participate too much anymore, as some of you may or may not know. Uh, but it's always been a topic that just comes up over and over and over. Plastic wheels versus metal wheels. Um, I've always been a supporter of plastic wheels because I've always felt like um, they, they've they run well for me. They're uh, good quality, especially the um, the uh, Microtrains wheel sets. Um, I, I don't I have never seen where they actually keep the track cleaner by running metal wheels than with plastic wheels or anything. And I'm still, because I'm new at putting the metal wheels on, I'm still, and I have used metal wheels in the past, but um, I have never really found that one versus the other made a hill of beans uh, as far as keeping track clean. Maybe in some environments it does, but not in my environment, in my room. But what I have found is uh, during Gavin and I's little switching adventure we had the other day is that um, number one, I found a lot of cars that varied in weight substantially. Some were really, really heavy and some were really, really light. And uh, so I started doing some investigating on weighting cars and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, and also uh, putting metal wheel sets on simply for the um, added low center of gravity weight that those will add to a car. Granted, four axles don't weigh very much, but uh, they definitely weigh more than uh, a, a, a set of plastic wheels. Plastic wheels don't weigh anything more than a piece of styrofoam. Uh, but I feel like whatever weight they have adds to the low lowest center of gravity on that car and has got to help them track through turnouts and around the track and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not a physicist or anything like that and or an engineer for that matter uh, except maybe a model railroad engineer but um, logic just tells me that they would work better for that and so we're gonna put metal wheel sets on everything uh, I'm rechecking everything as I go to make sure all the trucks swing freely make sure that I have micro trains trucks on everything and I've already run across a bunch of cars that uh, didn't they've had um, Atlas trucks or something something other than micro trains uh, we won't go into why you know everybody's got an opinion on that as well um, I happen to like micro trains products and trucks so uh, we're gonna leave that alone but um, I think I'll just uh, get started with this and show you how I'm adding weight and show you how I'm uh, putting metal wheel or uh, metal, metal wheel sets on and the different axle links and so forth and try and give you just a brief rundown of what I know about it which is very little you can see the size of this brain is not very big but but uh, I'll tell you what I know and uh, you guys know that and uh, let's get started with this Okay, what I decided to do is, uh, you guys have seen the video, I'm sure, of uh, Gavin and I doing switching. And um, I had so much, or no, we, I didn't say I, um, we seem to have trouble with cars being too light. Uh, and uh, in a string of cars, shoving that car off the track. So I decided I would check the weights on my cars. And lo and behold, according to uh, what I have read almost all my cars are underweight 
Um, so I've decided to add weight. I've also decided that adding metal wheels to the cars adds a certain amount of weight at the very lowest point on the car. I'm not adding it for keeping the track clean or anything because you guys all know what my feeling is on that. But uh, anyway, um, I ran across this when I was looking around for NMRA weights. And it's, it's by a gentleman by the name of Wesley Steiner, S-T-E-I-N-E-R. And um, probably if you look up NMRA weights, I don't know how I came across this, but anyways, um, and I don't know if he would really like me using it or not because it's supposed to be copyrighted, but uh, um, it's out there on the web, so I, I figure you can find it. But anyways... I thought it was very interesting because he took the time uh, to set up uh, a length of car versus the weight. Um, so you can use this scale ruler to lay your car on and then figure out how much that car should weigh. And this is what I'm going by and it seems like uh, it, it works well. Uh, I, I may have guys have conflicting uh, opinions on this. But so far, I've been very successful in adding weight to them, and they feel right uh, to me. So anyway, you can look this up on the web. Like I said, this is what I'm going by, and let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, as far as adding weight goes, uh, what I'm using is these, uh, basically they're wheel weights, but these are Micromark's uh, weights. And what I'm finding on most of the boxcars uh, that they should weigh um, 0.9 to 1 ounce and uh, so what I'm doing is they're they're coming up about 0.7 so I'm cutting one of these in half and putting half in each end of the car and I like these a lot so far simply because this double-sided foam tape since it's designed for car use automotive wheel use uh, sticks like crazy and I find that uh, they seem to stick in the cars real well but this is what I'm using for weight um, we normally have them on the website, but uh, they're in transit right now, so we don't have them at the moment, but we will have. Um, you will also find that they're, and I get asked this question all the time, uh, different car manufacturers, rolling stock manufacturers, have different lengths of axles. Um, these are what I've been using, and this is what I'm going to use. Uh, these are Fox Valley uh, models. There's 100 axles in here, 33 inch wheels with a .540 axle. And these fit, and they claim it fits Microtrains, Athern, Fox Valley, and BLMA. I don't have a lot of BLMA cars, and I haven't um, tried any yet. And most BLMA cars already come with metal wheels. And the same thing with Fox Valley themselves now, because they're producing the wheels. Uh, I don't have... I don't believe I have any Atherin rolling stock, and that's another story. Um, but I do have a lot of microtrains. So, consequently, <clears throat> I have three packs here, and I've already almost blown through two packs. So, um, a lot of wheels to change. It's very time-consuming. Uh, the Like I say, the .540, the .33, uh, or the 533, uh, seem to fit microtrains. Uh, these axles here are Fox Valley. They're 33 inch wheels and they fit .553 axles which is Intermountain and some Atlas trucks, okay? Uh, what I'm finding out is <clears throat> pardon me, you actually need to know what your axle length is on what you're replacing. Um, I have some point and I don't know whose axle these are, but these are .570. I measured them. And as long as I'm talking about measuring, let me go get my measuring device and I'll show you what you really need to do. Okay, gang. Uh, what you'll need to do this is one of these. Um, it's a caliper. And... Um, this one here, I don't know where I got it. I was, I was, I have three of these, and this one was probably willed to me by uh, the gentleman where I, that passed away that uh, I, I inherited his desk. But nevertheless, you can get these at Harbor Freight. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a super fancy one. This one happens to be a little bit fancy. It's not digital, but it's a little bit fancy. 
and um, you can see that this is on uh, I think you can see that's on 5 and then that's on 7 0 and if I take this the wheels I showed you a minute ago the 5 7 O's if I take that out and I close that on that axle hang on one second let me see if I can I don't know if I can do it hard enough to capture it and I don't know if I want to do it that hard you don't have to do it hard but if you can having a little con trouble controlling my hands here but see it's a little bit tight because I can't run it straight through if I loosen it up just a hair now I can run that axle through there without binding okay and you can see that that's 570 oh. okay so I know you know that way it tells me I can, I can take any axle out of anywhere and tell you what length it is like here's one and I'm sure it's micro trains but here's a plastic axle I just grabbed out of my my box here I'm gonna check this one and micro trains axles are supposed to be 5.333 or something like that or 30 and you can see that we have about uh, 532 so I know this is a micro trains axle because I well it came out of a micro trains truck so but what I'm saying is when you're doing these cars and if you're changing a lot of wheel sets or changing any wheel sets for that matter you have to know what that axle length is you just have to know okay and there's no they don't the manufacturers don't seem to have any standard length so really you need one of these tools um, to tell you what that axle length is so anyway let me change a few here and show you how I'm doing it okay the cars that I can disassemble I disassemble and add weight to them um, if we if we take a look at our chart here if I can get it over here where we can um, take a look at it this car it falls in the range of one ounce okay remove my paper and I've already taken the car apart and I believe this is a wheels of time car I put the body I put the chassis and I put the weight in here you can see that this car is 0.7 ounces so that being said and it's already got uh, metal wheel sets on it so that being said what I know I need to do is add some weight to it so I'm gonna grab my uh, I'm gonna grab some of these weights and I'm gonna just nip one of these off and I use a pair of nine inch pliers I, I don't know what everybody else uses I think these weights do not contain lead anymore I don't know what they're made out of as far as I'm concerned they're probably unobtainium or something I don't know but um, I use one block and I generally split it in half so if I add this you can see that it brings my weight on the car the total components of the car and it already has metal wheels I don't know if I said that or not up to one ounce I don't try and make it exact if it's slightly over that's fine with me and if it's slightly under that's fine with me and I have some cars for instance this one I believe it's an inner mountain that I can't get apart because they go when they go together they glue the roof down in there and I don't want to break the car getting the roof off so whatever weight this winds up being is what it's going to be all I need to do on this one is change the trucks because it's got um, non micro trains trucks on it and I'll put metal wheels on it but you can see by adding uh, the quarter ounce weight to this WP car uh, we've come up to one ounce so let me split that in half and stick it down and I'll show you what we got what I do is I just take the nine inch pliers because this stuff is pretty stout and I get them in the jaws of the plier and it's a two-handed operation I basically cut the weight in half it's kind of hard to get the backing paper off of this stuff but I get the backing paper off by the way before I get too carried away here on this particular car which is kind of an unusual 
uh, design. The weight lays in the car in a little in some little slots here, like kind of like so. I've got it cockeyed, but in nevertheless, um, let me see if I can get it in there correctly. It goes in there, and I can't tilt it up. There, I can tilt it up. It goes in there like that. And then the, the uh, bottom goes in the car, and that little piece of black foam you see there just rests up against this to cushion it so that it doesn't rattle inside the car. So basically you can see that what I need to do is put some weight on either side here. So that's what we're going to do. And like I say, I picked a kind of a weird design car to show you on. But, but uh, put one here. Get the backing paper off of this one. And I, know, and I know it's not cut exactly perfect. I can't get any of them to come out exactly perfect. But the idea is just to add the weight to the entire car, and I'm splitting it over the trucks so that it, it's pretty even down weight down on the trucks. So that's, this is kind of what you wind up with. And I guarantee you can't pull this off, these off of here without tearing the, tearing the uh, foam. So now what I'm going to do is try and get this laid back in the car, hopefully. And I will put the foam in there. Maybe. Got the air conditioner blowing on me here too, which you guys can probably hear. The, the, uh, the uh, bottom of this car is plastic. That's why there's a good size steel weight in there, okay? But we're going to stick this back in there and hopefully get it together. And I think you might have heard it click. And there we have it. It's back in. Now, we're going to put our car down on here, which my thing says minus two. This is a postal scale, by the way. <clears throat> now you can see that once I put it together, that it's actually saying it's 1.1, but my guess is it's closer to one. It doesn't make any difference to me. I like the weight of it, and we're going to go with that. So, because this one already had metal wheels on it, we're ready to go. By the way, the color on the, the colors on here before someone asks is uh, each one of us in our club has a color, and we color the pins that hold the trucks in so that we know whose equipment is who when we get it all out on the layout, and everybody has their own individual color, and obviously mine happens to be white. Now, what I've also been doing when I finish these, and I know that I could look at the... Um, wheels to tell I've changed the wheels, but if I don't know that I've added the weight to it, I mean I could certainly weigh it, but if I don't have a scale handy, uh, I've been taking a little and putting a little dot on them like so with a sharpie. Doesn't hurt the car at all. And that way I know I've completed it as far as putting metal wheels on it or may ensuring that it has metal wheels and weighting it to the proper weight. So there's one car down and I'll give you an example of a microtrains car. Okay, <clears throat> this is your common microtrains car. Um, you can generally tell microtrains cars if you don't have the box simply because they say microtrains on them if you look real close. But usually the bottom is um, a, a cast metal with kind of this silvery black finish. Um, and, and anyway, uh, I think most everybody can tell a microtrains car. Plus, it has microtrains trucks on it already. And at some point in time, I had put. Um, uh, the microtrains um, uh, rusted color uh, plastic axles on it. Let's see what this uh, stock microtrains weighs. Okay, it's weighing in at about 8, which is kind of surprising to me. Um, <clears throat> usually they're a little lighter than that, but what we're going to do is we're going to see where we go once we put four axles on there. And you can see that the axles didn't really um, help the weight of the car any. They obviously weigh under one, uh, point, uh, one ounce. Um, but we're going to stick those on the car and reweigh the car before we add weight. 
Okay, putting these wheels on, all it requires is just pushing the axle to the side, holding the uh, truck straight, pushing the axle to one side, and basically popping it out of there. And hang on a minute, i got to get my... <clears throat> I have a dish that I've, I'm putting all my uh, old axles in. Turn the car around, do the same thing. And I already know that these uh, micro trains, metal, these metal wheel sets, these Fox Valley sets, I already know they fit because I've done it 100 cars already. And um, we'll just get these stuck in. And I'm using them out of the container instead of the ones that are up there because they're kind of laying on each other. And I forgot. So um, we're doing them. Oops, I'm, I'm out of the camera. Anyway, we're doing them out of the container. So now I've got, and you got to make sure that they roll freely. And it's very, very hard to see them when you roll them. But if you're, if you're not on the camera here, you can, you can actually see them rolling. So now I've got the wheel sets on there. We're going to remove the wheel sets I had put on there for demonstration purposes, and we're going to set this back on there. Still showing eight, eight ounces. So we're going to do the same thing we had done before, and we're going to cut. And I realized that we could probably get this more precise, but I'm not too interested in totally precise. So never have been. So I'm going to take that quarter ounce and lay it on there. And you can see that we wind up with one one. That doesn't bother me whatsoever. Uh, so I'm going to split this. Do not get your fingers in the pliers, by the way. It's not a pleasant thing. Uh, when I worked for the telephone company for years, uh, I used those pliers every day. And I can tell you that getting your fingers in them is not pleasant. Now I've taken the the uh, backing paper off of that one and I'm taking the backing paper off of this one probably got too close to the camera there it's kinda hard to work and look at the, where you're at on the camera as well now everybody knows on micro trains car I think that you just kinda pry off the side like that and the frame just rolls out now because this has double doors on each end in other words, on each side. And we may not want the, the uh, weight to show as much if we have the door open. I'm going to put the weights way back here. I Generally, if it's, a, if it's a single door car, I put the weight there. But because this is a double door, I'm going to put it way out on the end. So that if, we, if the doors are open, you, know, you, you don't have a very good chance of seeing the weight in there. So I'm putting it right over the, uh, right over the center point of the truck. And that's all there is to it. These things are not going to come off of there. They're not going to roll around in the car. And we're just going to stick the body back on. It's a pretty simple and easy process. Maybe. Close our... You can see here, if I have the doors open, I don't see the weights in there. It takes You really got to look in there to see the weights. Um, I just prefer to do it that way. Close up the doors. We'll stick her back on the scale. And sure enough, we have just, just over one ounce, which is good for me. I'm going to take the car, turn it upside down. And on this, there's not much place to put a dot, so I'm going to put it on the, on the brake uh, cylinder. Now we have another car done. Okay, this car here is an inner mountain car. I can tell because it has all the individual grab irons and ladders. And these cars are the ones that it's very hard to get the top off of. The chassis does not come off. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to add weight to these, uh, hopefully through the door. So um, you can see that it's uh, 0.7 ounce. I'm going to cut another one of my quarter weights, quarter ounce weights. And you can see when I add the weight to what I have there, 
I have exactly one uh, exactly one ounce and I am going to take and I'm going to add my Weddle, metal uh, Weddle, boy I'm gonna add my metal wheel sets I guess you could get Weddle out of metal wheel sets I did um, so we're gonna add some wheel sets and you can see now that we've got one we'll have 1.1 on there I what I can do if you want to try and be a little more accurate and they these don't weigh hardly anything but we can certainly take the plastic sets off you can also see on this that the underbody there's a little different underbody detail on this and I believe the underbody on these are plastic as well because it's it's all one molded piece the body shell so if we take the plastic off and we put it on the scale we're still at 1-1 so we didn't really lose any weight by taking the plastic wheels off but I just was pointing that out to you I'm gonna go ahead and stick the metal wheels on I'm gonna get it with my thumbnail push it sideways flexing the side of the truck until the wheel set goes in there and there it is and one more and there it is and all I have to do and I don't know if you can see this if I turn this you can see the wheel spinning on the opposite side you look at the wheel back you can see it spinning you want to make sure they free roll like that because if you put too long of an axle in there it'll bind and it'll just drag the car so now let's get started putting that weight in there okay gang uh, on this particular car since like I said I couldn't get the top off what I'm gonna do is I, I happen to have these goofy needle nose pliers that I just happen to have in my toolbox over here but you could use tweezers or anything for sure and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a corner of the foam so that I can hold it like that and what I'm gonna do is turn this sideways stick it through the door and I'm gonna stick it just let it fall onto the floor back there as far as I can get it to go and sometimes the the uh, tweezers or pliers stick to the weight but once you get the weight in there and just have it laying then you can go inside there and I don't know whether this is showing or not but you can go inside there and just push down on that weight to get it to stick to the floor okay so I've got both of my weights in the MEC um, Intermountain car and the metal wheels and it's showing one ounce exactly so we're gonna consider this one done and I'm just gonna put a black mark on this green chassis indicating that I put the metal wheels on and the weight another one down okay now we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, flat cars and gondolas um, I believe this one's an inner mountain I'm not real positive about that it doesn't nobody seems to be obliged to put their uh, name of their product on the bottom of their car uh, it has a little serial number on there but I don't know who wrote that on there but anyways <clears throat> let me put that down you can see that that car uh, even with its wood interior and without the metal wheels weighs 0.9 by the way this is also a 40-foot car I, I can I can uh, put it up next to a 40-foot car so I I can either lay it on my template or I can just I mean I know it's a 40-foot car but anyways you could lay it on your template make sure the length you got and what it should weigh um, what I, and this one here has got microtrains trucks on it already uh, we already see that it weighs 0.9 we can add our four wheel sets to it and you can see that just by adding the wheel sets to this gun we are at our one ounce so what we're going to do on this car is just add the um, wheel sets to it and we're going to call it good by the way this is a load that Gavin was running around in there it's a micro trains load but uh, let's just see how much this uh, cast load weighs you can see that uh, that weighs 0.5 so anytime you start adding these cast resin loads and other things you're really increasing the weight of the car 
so you have to give some consideration to how you you know how you're gonna haul it around most of the time if you're pulling up grades and stuff of course adding all this weight to all these cars is going to affect you pulling up grades so if you've got steep grades uh, you may want to not weight your cars as heavily uh, if you're going to do a lot of switching then you might want the weight uh, I, 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 like I said I feel like that it helps to put the metal wheel sets on and helps with switching pushing the car pulling the car the trains more stable when it's going okay we're gonna go ahead and put the wheel sets on this guy and I'll be right back okay you can see with the metal wheels on there now that it is one ounce and we're gonna mark this guy done I'll put my dot on and we're good to go but that's the story on gondolas uh, not all of them weigh the same I don't know I have one over here and I don't know I guess this is an inner mountain as well because it's got the wood inside We'll do this one next, and as you can see, all it's going to require is just the metal wheels. Okay, here's a uh, microtrains. I think it's a 60-foot car or 62-foot car. Uh, we're going to lay it on our scale here, and we're going to see how long or how much this thing should weigh. Now, according to this you can see that it's falling in the 1.3 uh, ounces so let's see what it actually weighs and it's 1.2 I believe if it was me since it was in the 1.2 just over into the 1.3 I would leave this car alone and simply put metal wheels on it in fact we can do that and see what it does Okay, I've got the metal wheels on and you can still see that it's falling in the 1.2 range. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, flat cars and such. Um, it's pretty obvious when you look at a flat car that whatever it weighs is what it's going to weigh because there's almost no place. I mean, I guess if you were real fanatical, you could figure out some place to put some weight on this car. <clears throat> but I don't know how much weight gain you would get but this particular car if I put it on my scale over here should weigh 1.1 based on its length it's there I don't think there's any way it's gonna weigh near that but let's see see it only weighs seven ounces and we're only gonna gain a, a 0.1 probably by putting metal wheels on it but instead of balking about the weight of the car we're just gonna leave that as is and accept that as its weight and it's just gonna get metal wheels applied okay I added the metal wheels to the flat car and you can see that it really didn't make any difference at all but we're just gonna call this done and accept it as it is I'm going to put a mark on the bottom and we're gonna call that one good Here's another car you may have an issue with. Uh, obviously, if you can see through a car, you may not want the weight to show. And I don't think, um, I don't think, well, I don't really know. I'm undecided yet. I haven't done any stock cars yet. But let's just find out what it should be. I'm going to lay it on. I know it's 40 feet, feet but I'm going to lay it on the scale. I'm in the one ounce. Let's see what it actually weighs. it only weighs 0 0.6 so you can see that the stock car is extremely underweight according to what it said what the scale says it should be if I take one of my weights again you can see that even with a quarter ounce on there it's only 0 0.8 so it's even light with the weight um, so I'm, not, I'm undecided as to what I'm going to do here I mean uh, I, I don't know is it would show that much if I put it on the ends in fact I think we're going to go ahead and weight this one and we'll, we'll see what, what I mean, obviously we're going to get 0.8 or 0.9 by the time I add the metal wheels possibly I don't know but let's see what we get 
Okay, I added the weight to this car. You can see it through there, and you can see it through there. Um, I suppose you could paint that black and not be so obvious, but we're not. I'm I'm not that picky. But let's put it back on here. I've got the metal wheels on it, and you can see that we're at 0.9. We're just off by 0.1 as far as being the proper weight. But we're going to call this one good as well. And like I say, sometimes you may or you may not want to um, add weight to something like a stock car or a flat car. Or a gondola, for that matter. Okay, I'm scooting way over here to the side because I just wanted to tell you guys um, at the end of this video here that um, all the equipment that I have out here on top of the layout right now, I, I've got metal wheels on. And uh, I, Gab, between Gavin and I, we've hauled um, at least these three trains out here and another train uh, up and down my helix and around the layout. And uh, I've got to say... For the length of trains that I run here, which is typically maybe 13 to 15 cars, uh, well, 10 to 15 cars, um, I can't, I really can't see any difference uh, running up and down the helix um, as far as robbing power from locomotives. Of course, we're double headed and, and quadruple headed and, and triple headed on, on a lot of this here. But that's probably the way I'm going to run stuff. It, everything will be at least double-headed. I do have one train down here that you can't see the other end of that has uh, two GP20s and it's got a dummy GP20 on it. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it had nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, five, about 15 cars on it. Maybe tw about, yeah, it had about 15 cars on it. And I had no trouble getting up the Helix uh, with that either. And it surprises me with those GP20s. So what I'm saying is it doesn't seem to really adversely affect um, the weight of the train. doesn't affect grades unless you're really um, overstressed on your grades already. So, uh, so far I don't find any, any problem with weighting the cars up like I do. Okay, as I said in the video... Um, I have resisted this for a long, long time. I, I had some reasons for it, as you heard, uh, but I'm almost done doing this, and uh, I just thought I should update you guys on what's happening on the ACT right now. I haven't done anything um, scenery-related in there for a little while. Uh, I have, but not enough to, to make another update video, but that should be coming relatively shortly. But anyway, as for today, as usual, thanks for watching.